Hello everyone and welcome to another video from our channel, Who Died Today America? In this video, we will be bringing you a list of famous celebrities who have passed away today, June 23rd, and in the last few days. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like. Number 12, Hamish Harding, a daring aviation tycoon and intrepid explorer, has tragically passed away at the age of 58. On Sunday, June 18th, 2023, while on a dive to the wreckage of the Titanic, the submersible craft carrying Harding and four others lost contact with its mother ship. After a multinational search spanning five days, it was confirmed on Thursday, June 22nd, that all five individuals had perished. The U.S. Coast Guard discovered debris from the craft on the ocean floor, approximately 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic. Throughout his extraordinary life, Harding fearlessly embraced adventure, venturing to the depths of the ocean and the heights of the heavens. His remarkable achievements include setting Guinness World Records for exploring the deepest part of the ocean, Challenger Deep, and completing a record-setting circumnavigation of the world over both the North and South Poles. Harding's final expedition to the Titanic was intended to provide a glimpse into history's most storied oceanic tragedy, but it tragically ended in loss. Harding's passing is a tremendous loss for the world of exploration and aviation. His indomitable spirit, thirst for knowledge, and dedication to scientific discovery inspired countless individuals. He will be remembered as a pioneer who fearlessly pursued the unknown, leaving a lasting legacy of adventure and exploration. Hamish Harding is survived by his wife Linda, his sons Rory and Giles, a stepdaughter, Lauren Marissa Zaz, and a stepson, Brian Zaz. His untimely death leaves a void in the hearts of his loved ones and the wider community, but his memory will continue to inspire generations to come. Number 11. Paxton Whitehead, a cherished British actor known for his unforgettable performances in film and theater, passed away at the age of 85 on June 16, 2023. Whitehead's death, which occurred in Arlington, Virginia, was announced by his daughter, Alex Whitehead Gordon, who cited complications from a fall as the cause. With his deep, baritone voice, Whitehead was a master at infusing humor into seemingly stiff upper lip characters. Fans will remember him from his roles in Back to School and popular TV series like Friends and Mad About You. Whitehead, born on October 17, 1937 in Kent, England, attended the rugby school and London's Weber Douglas Academy of Dramatic Art. His early acting journey took him across the country with touring companies and led him to the new Shakespeare Memorial Theatre, now integrated into the Royal Shakespeare Company. The real jump in his career came when he relocated to New York City, lighting up Broadway. Whitehead's talent was recognized with a Tony nomination for his performance in the revival of Camelot. His acting prowess wasn't limited to comedy. He also garnered high praise for his portrayal of the titular role in Shakespeare's Richard III at the Old Globe in San Diego in 1985. Small screen audiences equally adored Whitehead, who brought to life a fuss-budget neighbor on Mad About You, a hard-nosed boss on Friends, and an uncompromising headmaster on Frasier. His film repertoire also included Jumpin' Jack Flash, Baby Boom, and The Adventures of Huck Finn, while his TV credits featured Murder, She Wrote, Third Rock from the Sun, The West Wing, Heart to Heart, and Caroline in the City. Whitehead is mourned by his daughter Alex, son Charles, stepdaughter Heather Whitehead, and four grandchildren. The actor's approach to comedy was both intriguing and serious, mirroring his view on the craft of acting. As Whitehead once said, it interests me more, and actually I take it a great deal more seriously than I do tragedy. Number 10. Henry Petrosky, an eminent engineer and scholar celebrated for his comprehensive analyses of design failures in large structures and everyday items, passed away at 81 on June 14, 2023. The cause of death was cancer, and his final days were spent in hospice care in Durham, North Carolina. 
Petrosky held a distinguished career as a professor of civil and environmental engineering at Duke University for four decades. He was a leading figure in his field, widely recognized for his innovative exploration of failure as an integral component of successful engineering. His mantra, a reworking of the architectural phrase, form follows function, was form follows failure, an axiom encapsulating his conviction that understanding failure is pivotal to engineering success. His unique perspective found expression in a range of influential books, including To Engineer is Human, The Role of Failure in Successful Design, 1985. In this landmark work, Petrosky delved into the devastating consequences of engineering failures, such as the 1981 collapse of the Skywalks at the Kansas City Hyatt Regency Hotel and the 1940 failure of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington State. However, Petrosky's genius also lay in his ability to reveal the fascinating complexities of the most mundane objects. His book, The Pencil, A History of Design and Circumstance, gave readers an intricate tour through the pencil's history and engineering design, a subject inspired by the poor quality of pencils at Duke. He further engaged the public's imagination with The Toothpick Technology and Culture, 2007, where he traced the toothpick's evolution from its primitive use to the birth of the modern toothpick industry. Henry Petrosky's loss will be deeply felt, but his legacy lives on. His transformative approach to understanding engineering its successes, failures, and its subtle influence on everyday life will continue to inspire future engineers and thinkers. Number 9. Chaim Rowett, a devoted Holocaust survivor who spent his life ensuring the names of Holocaust victims were never forgotten, died in Jerusalem on May 22nd at the age of 90. Rowett was the creator of the International Memorial Project, Unto Every Person There Is a Name which is dedicated to the annual public recitation of names of those who fell victim to the Nazis. Motivated by the desire to humanize the Holocaust and make people grasp the enormity of the tragedy, Rowett once said during a speech at the United Nations in 2016, I tried to find a way to make the Holocaust more personal so people can understand the calamity of six million souls murdered for being Jewish. The project was launched in 1989, after the Dutch government decided to commute the life sentences of two Nazi war criminals. This spurred Rowett and a group of Israelis with Dutch heritage to stage a protest at the Dutch embassy in Tel Aviv, where they read the names of some of the 107,000 Dutch Jews who were murdered in the death camps. The tireless efforts of Rowett led to the endorsement of his initiative by Yad Vashem, Israel's foremost authority on documenting and commemorating the Holocaust, and the Knesset, the Israeli parliament. Starting from the early 2000s, the reading of the victims' names became an integral part of the Yom HaShoah or Holocaust Remembrance Day ceremonies. Number 8. George Winterling, a groundbreaking meteorologist who had an illustrious career spanning nearly five decades, passed away at 91 on June 21, 2023, the beloved Winterling, remembered for his dedicated service at WJXT4, served his Jacksonville viewers for an impressive 47 years before retiring in 2009. Not just an average weatherman, Winterling was a visionary in his field. He introduced the concept of humature, a term that would later evolve into what we know today as the heat index, which gauges the perceived heat. His uncanny ability to accurately predict weather patterns even in the face of contrary predictions, earned him tremendous respect. One standout prediction was his accurate forecast of Hurricane Dora hitting northeast Florida on September 10, 1964, a time when all other meteorologists expected the storm to veer towards the Carolinas. George Winterling was not just a weatherman, but an innovator, creating methods to help his viewers visualize the weather. He ingeniously used white paint to draw clouds on maps and markers to represent the feels-like temperature. This knack for making the complex simple was part of his undeniable charm and effectiveness. Prior to his tenure at WJXT, Winterling worked at the United States Weather Bureau, now known as the National Weather Center Office, in Jacksonville. He made the switch to television, 
realizing that weather programs of the time failed to adequately explain weather phenomena to the public. Remembered as much for his contributions to the field of meteorology. As for his love of gardening, Winterling was a cherished member of the Jacksonville community. His loss is deeply felt, and his legacy will undoubtedly continue to inspire future meteorologists. His commitment to his work, the unique touch he brought to weather forecasting, and his tireless dedication to his viewers will forever be remembered. Number 7. Cormac McCarthy, a literary colossus who transformed American fiction. Cormac McCarthy, one of the towering figures in American literature, passed away at the age of 89 due to natural causes at his home on June 13th. McCarthy's career was marked by his masterful storytelling and hauntingly beautiful prose. His novels, often depicting the harshness and violence of the American frontier and post-apocalyptic worlds, have left an indelible mark on contemporary literature. Notably, The Road, published in 2006, won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 2007. This poignant tale of a father and son's journey in post-apocalyptic America resonated deeply with readers. Another of his celebrated works, No Country for Old Men, was adapted into a critically acclaimed film by Joel and Ethan Cohen, which went on to win four Oscars, including Best Picture. Despite global fame, McCarthy remained a private person, rarely giving interviews or making public appearances. Throughout his nearly six-decade career, he published numerous novels, screenplays, and short stories, and his final works, The Passenger and Stella Maris, were published in 2022. Fellow author Stephen King described him as maybe the greatest American novelist of my time. McCarthy's legacy will endure through his thought-provoking and profoundly human stories that continue to captivate readers around the world. Number 6. Julie Garwood, best-selling romance novelist, passed away at her home in Leewood, Kansas, on June 8, 2023, at the age of 78. Garwood, whose works have been translated into 32 languages with over 40 million copies in print, began her writing career in her 40s. She first gained prominence with the 1985 historical romance novel Gentle Warrior and wrote several successful novels in the genre. Garwood was well regarded for the extensive research she put into her historical novels, providing them with both romance and period accuracy. After 15 years of historical romance writing, she took a leap into contemporary suspense with Heartbreaker in 2000, managing to maintain the romantic element amidst suspenseful plots. Her more recent novels, Sweet Talk (2012) and Wired (2017), displayed her commitment to authenticity by meticulously exploring modern themes such as financial fraud and computer hacking. Garwood's novels, known for their strong female characters and well-researched historical settings, gained her global acclaim. Despite her success, she remained humble, attributing her grounded nature to her family life. Her significant contributions to the romance genre and her unique narrative style will continue to be cherished by readers worldwide. Number 5. Russell H. Dilday, a distinguished figure in the Baptist community and ex-president of Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, died at the age of 92 on June 21, 2023. From 1978 to 1994, under Dilday's leadership, the seminary grew into the world's largest and trained over half of all Southern Baptist missionaries of the era. However, his tenure was characterized by clashes with the Fundamentalist Board amid Southern Baptists' fight for control over the nation's largest non-Catholic denomination. Dilday is remembered for his grace and adherence to Baptist principles. Even during tumultuous periods for the seminary and Southern Baptists, Post his contentious departure in 1994, Dilday held various positions of influence in Baptist institutions and conventions. Beyond his institutional contributions, he founded the Tallawood Baptist Church in Houston and pastored at several other churches. A prolific writer, Dilday contributed to many books and articles and stood as a leading statesman of the Southern Baptist Convention throughout his career. Despite the controversy and criticism surrounding his dismissal from the seminary, 
Dilde exhibited remarkable grace, steadfastly focusing on God's calling. His legacy is treasured within the Baptist community for his unwavering commitment to grace, charity, and conviction. Born on September 30, 1930, in Amarillo, Texas, Dilde pursued his bachelor's degree at Baylor University, where he met his lifelong companion, Betty, to whom he was married for 66 years. He earned his Master of Divinity and Doctor of Philosophy degrees from Southwestern Seminary. Dilde leaves behind his two daughters, six grandchildren, six great-grandchildren, numerous nieces and nephews, a sister and a brother. Number four, Peter Allen, a former cricketer for Australia and Queensland, renowned for being one of the mere trio of players to claim 10 wickets in a Sheffield Shield innings, died at the age of 87 on June 22, 2023. Allen's solitary test match for Australia transpired during the 1965-66 Ashes against England, where he took two wickets, one of which was English captain Mike Smith. Before his test appearance, Allen had joined Australia's 1965 Caribbean tour, but was unable to play in a test match due to illness. Remarkably, less than a month post his only test match, Allen achieved the distinct feat of taking 10 wickets in a Sheffield Shield game against Victoria. He became the second cricketer after Tim Wall in 1933 to accomplish this, and the next year, Ian Brayshaw also matched this achievement. Thus far, they are the only three cricketers to hold this record in Sheffield Shield history. Beyond his exceptional on-field feats, Allen also had a significant first-class career from 1959 to 1969, taking 206 wickets, including 12 five-wicket holes and three ten-wicket holes across 57 matches. After retiring from cricket, Allen pursued diverse roles such as working with the Brisbane City Council, being a hotel publican, and serving as a civil celebrant on Hamilton Island. Queensland cricket chairman Chris Simpson paid tribute to Allen, praising his grit and prowess as a bowler and his contribution to Queensland cricket. Number 3. Sheldon Bergstrom, a cherished member of the Canadian and American performing arts communities, passed away at the age of 51 on June 18, 2023. Known for his commanding voice and his compassionate nature, Bergstrom was a former resident of Prince Albert and left an indelible mark on the industry. Bergstrom's involvement in the Prince Albert performing arts community began in 1995 when he contributed to the set construction for West Side Story. His impact on the community was profound. With his talent and warmth, leaving a lasting impression on those who had the privilege of knowing him. Throughout his career, Bergstrom garnered praise for his performances, notably as Tevye in Fiddler on the Roof and as the MC for the Country North Show. His musical versatility shone through as he effortlessly tackled a range of songs, from the iconic lines of Sandy in Summer Lovin', from Greece to the theme song of the Western Canada Summer Games. Beyond his public appearances, Bergstrom was remembered for his creative stage presence and his generous spirit. Among those who knew him, his portrayal of Tevye in Fiddler on the Roof stood out as a favorite, encapsulating his exceptional talent and leaving a lasting impact. The loss of Sheldon Bergstrom is deeply mourned by his friends, colleagues, and fans as his vibrant presence and contributions to the performing arts community will be cherished and remembered. Number 2. Teresa Taylor, better known as Teresa Nervosa, the influential drummer of the Texas-based band Butthole Surfers and an emblematic figure of Generation X, has passed away at 60. She succumbed to lung disease on June 18, 2023. Taylor's presence epitomized the angst and nonconformity of her generation, leaving an indelible mark on the cultural landscape, notably through her appearance in Richard Linklater's film Slacker, 1990. Despite her health challenges, Taylor displayed unwavering resilience. Born in Arlington, Texas in 1962, she honed her drumming skills in marching bands before becoming a key member of Butthole Surfers. The band, while not achieving mainstream success during Taylor's tenure, embodied a spirit of rebellion and counterculture. 
Taylor's legacy extends beyond her musical contributions, representing the aimless and disillusioned youth of her era. Her passing leaves a void in music and culture, yet her impact as a drummer and a defining figure of Generation X will be forever cherished. Number 1. Ivan Menezes, the esteemed head of Johnny Walker and other liquor giants, passed away at the age of 63 on June 7, 2023, in London. His death was a result of complications arising from emergency surgery for a stomach ulcer. As the chief executive of Diageo for a decade, Menezes played a pivotal role in presenting alcohol as an attainable luxury and fostering the growth of renowned brands such as Smirnoff and Guinness. Menezes, with his extensive marketing background and keen understanding of consumer sentiment, believed that spirits offered an accessible luxury to customers, even in times of economic instability. During his tenure, Diageo became a global powerhouse in the alcohol industry, selling over 200 brands in more than 180 countries. Brands like Smirnoff Vodka, Tanqueray Gin, Johnny Walker Scotch, Captain Morgan Rum, and Guinness Beer flourished under his leadership. Recognizing the need to appeal to a new generation, Menezes spearheaded a significant transformation of Johnny Walker's image. His efforts to make the brand more relevant and appealing to younger consumers paid off. The introduction of the iconic slogan, Keep Walking, and a groundbreaking international advertising campaign rejuvenated Johnny Walker's reputation and contributed to its continued success. Beyond Johnny Walker, Menezes' achievements include expanding Diageo's tequila offerings by acquiring the Don Julio brand and the renowned Casamigos brand created by George Clooney and his partners. Under his guidance, Diageo experienced significant growth and implemented initiatives to reduce carbon emissions and promote workforce diversity. Menezes' impact extended beyond the business realm. He received a knighthood from King Charles III in January 2023 in recognition of his contributions to business and equality. He leaves behind a legacy of excellence and innovation in the spirits industry. Ivan Menezes is survived by his wife Shibani and their children, Rohini and Nikhil. His passing is mourned by the global spirits community, as well as by family, friends and colleagues who admired his remarkable achievements and charismatic leadership. You can continue watching these videos about recent celebrity deaths in June on your screen. To keep yourself updated, you can turn on notifications.